corrector mentioning is vital when 3D modeling a product for the real world application, in that the design will be physically manufactured by 3D printing, laser cut, or CNC machining. It is best practice to begin a design with known dimensions, that be measuring the object to be copied with a ruler or calipers. Best practice is to measure to the nearest half or one millimeter for precision to keep in mind manufacturing tolerance. Manufacturing tolerance is the degree of accuracy required for manufacturing of each design component. In that the different components to fit together accurately, a small tolerance may need to be applied, especially if the product is to be made of hard, breakable material like plastic and metals. These won't bend or be able to be forced to fit, like timber maybe. For an example, we've got this nut and bolt. The thread of the nut and bolt needs to precisely match with some separation for smooth movement, yet too much or too little separation will cause the product to be unusable. Now please go through and open up this document. It can be found in the video description. <clears throat> to go through and complete it, first of all, we need to go into the edit sketch mode. So down at the timeline, right click on this icon and select edit sketch. You might need to rotate the view around. Make sure you're in the sketch workspace. And now we're going to be applying dimensions. So dimensions can be applied to points, paths, and profiles. To create dimensions, you need to go to create, then sketch dimension. The hotkey is D. It's also often a shortcut uh, provided here. Try and get the description up. I'll select there. So use dimensions to control the size or position of sketched objects. In selecting it, we want to go through and dimension this first path. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, whoops, I've just got a few things selected. Start again. Select sketch dimension. Click and drag out. Please don't display it as that uh, angled dimension line and projection line. Uh, like orthogonal dimensioning in visual communication design, dimension should be displayed vertically or horizontally, not at an angle. And make sure they're identifiable from the path. So you don't want them too close. So approximately about 10 mil out from the closest object. Then we can go through and update that dimension. So I might want it at 200. Now we're going to proceed on to the next one. So I'm going to provide a dimension here, 150. I'm really happy with. Hotkey D, uh, whoops, undo. Hotkey D, drag out another 150. Now we're going to go through and dimension the uh, diameter of the circle. So select the midpoint, sorry, the outline. And notice beside that 343, that little back to front looking Q, um, that identifies the diameter. That is a diameter symbol, which you should be familiar with. 340. The next one we want to do is the arc. So I've selected uh, sketch dimension. And the arc is always going to be <clears throat> included as an R for radius. And so you can be placing it towards the arc. However, I like to be able to identify where that center line or center point is. So I tend to place it inside it. And so round that off to 280. When dimensioning, I would be rounding it to the nearest uh, one millimeter or the nearest 10 mil. That's up to you. Um, now we're gonna go through and proceed and apply dimensioning to angles as well. So in here, I have that selected once again. Select the two paths and just to notify 
diffusion what I want to be applying. And then I might type that out as 85 degrees. Uh, dimensions can be changed. So you just double click on them, change it to 180, and that will go through an update. And you're likely to have to go through an update uh, your designs as you proceed, you might be doing uh, test prints and then going through and making changes. Another handy feature is that equations can be applied within sketch dimensions. So addition, subtraction, multiplication and division can be uh, applied. So if we go back to here, double click, and it's gonna go divide by, and let's go four. And you can see that's all updated. <clears throat> now our design we cannot go through and scale it because we've set out the dimensions, um, but we still can move the design, okay? So what we wanna do now is set it in the workspace um, so the design becomes fully uh, defined. So all designs are orientated to a single point in Fusion, and this point is referred to as the origin. That's this area here. So notice the shaded circular origin symbol. This represents 0, 0, 0 on the X, Y, and Z axis. So there's no length, no depth, or no height. Essentially, this is a way for Fusion to lock or relate designs to one another, especially if you're working with multiple designs or multiple bodies and sketches. Now we're gonna go through and uh, dimension the paths and profiles to the origin. So we'll be selecting the dimensions and we'll start off with this one first. Uh, so I'm gonna select the top right hand corner to the origin. That didn't work. So you're selecting the origin and you're selecting the top right hand corner. And then we're gonna to proceed to place this out here. Okay, there's a bit of a crossover there. So I might actually place it in here. Probably not best practice, but for this one, that's okay. Um, now notice how it's turned slightly black to so the outline from that top corner to the origin and we'll place this line down here just so it's in line and more uh, easier to read. So round that off to 280 or well, let's go 260 just to pull that away. And so now it is uh, got a black surrounding box. This is Fusion emphasizing that the sketch is now fully defined in that the scale and the position, scale of the sketch along with the position of it relating to the origin is set in play. So I'll quickly go through and complete the remainder. So this line here, it's not gonna be best to place that there because that's gonna cause a bit of confusion where that arrow goes. So it's gonna be best to place it out there. So I have the smaller dimension closer to the object, larger dimensions further away. Um, oh, let's go 450. <clears throat> And just notice how I am aligning my dimensions. Place that down there for clarity. And now they're all gonna be black outline, notifying us that they're fully defined. <laughs> uh, it is highly likely that you're gonna to have to go through and change and update dimensions in designs uh, multiple times. This is especially after testing of prototype three designs where changes will need to be gone through and made because the tolerance of the printing machine might be, um, you know, not quite as precise. So there needs to be some modifications made there. So in doing so, making sure your design is easily be able to read. Uh, so the dimensions are really clear. Um, and so these can be updated without any errors or incorrect dimensions occurring. Thanks for watching.